I've never heard of an evolutionary system that uh, praises people who fail to compete. It doesn't sound like a particularly sustainable way to raise a civilization. But in your piece, you resurrect Plato's line about the inevitable evolution of democracies into tyrannies. It is the idea that liberal systems of government that favor freely elected representatives with limited power and short terms in office are the endangered species of the political realm. The theory goes that political systems, if not carefully managed, tend toward dictatorial systems. My favorite political writer, Machiavelli, agreed with him. And indeed, I would argue that Machiavelli's conclusion is more accurate to what we are seeing in the woke world of today. Machiavelli wrote, for monarchy easily becomes tyranny, aristocracy easily becomes oligarchy, and democracy easily converts to anarchy. Thus, anyone organizing a government according to one of the good forms does so but for a short time, because no precaution will prevent it from slipping into its opposite. So closely are the virtues and vices of the two related. Morris, do you fear that this is what we are seeing happened across not just Australia, but the entire Western world? Very much so. I think that uh, our belief in the values which carried us through for so long and for, for which we fought uh, two world wars have now been completely traduced. That people today uh, have no self-belief or self-confidence, certainly given the generation that I came from. And uh, I think this is extremely disappointing uh, and extremely alarming for my children and particularly my grandchildren, because I see that we're building bureaucracies, uh, larger and larger government, self-serving bureaucracies, which are essentially collectives, uh, which serve the people who are in those bureaucracies rather than the supposed clients. So whether it be education, whether it be in meteorology, whether it be in health, these are, uh, these are bureaucracies that are self-serving. And to the extent that there is any consequences, any accountability, it uh, really amounts to very little. And uh, you get, in the end, a concentration of power, uh, which in, its, in itself leads to, dicta uh, to dictatorships. Well, Morris, even democracy itself is tyrannical, if not limited by a set of ground rules, which is why nations like Australia have a constitution. The problem with human nature appears to be that politicians want power and weak citizens like to be told what to do. And well-publicised fear is the lubricant that shifts populations toward the arms of the state. And we've had an awful lot of that fear being sold to us lately. But it is not just fear that is nudging us along. In your piece in The Spectator, you write, Monash University's MBA course is the first mover. White, attractive, upper or middle class and highly literate students must take a privilege walk and undergo oppression training to challenge the violence of leadership by confronting the hegemony of imperialist, white supremacist, capitalist and patriarchal ideologies. Now, Morris, that's an awful lot of poorly used buzzwords from Monash University. What on earth is going on here and how does it relate to Mao? Well, as I say in that piece, this is straight out of Mao's uh, textbook. I mean, this is the, the, the word according to Mao, that he saw education as, being, as, as conferring on a certain class privilege, which wasn't conferred on, on the bulk, on the, on the masses. Uh, so that was really what uh, was moving him to uh, cause doctors or the, the Cultural Revolution caused doctors to come out to, uh, to till the fields and the peasants to come in and become doctors. I mean, it was a terrible, it was a terrible experiment. And we know that uh, the Great Leap Forward led to something like 40 million lives lost. Uh, I don't know whether there was any accountability to Ma for Mao because he continued on until the day he died. Uh, even though he may have uh, yielded to, to other leaders. But the, the, the system became the, the objective, and that's where Xi Jinping comes in today, essentially going back to where Mao was, that the Communist Party is supreme and that everybody has to be subordinate to the party.